Hi, this is Dave, and I'm standing here at Koopman Lumber Grafton store. We're going to be talking today about rental of the Bobcat, or the generic term is a skid steer machine, right behind me here. And this machine is available to rent at the Grafton and Uxbridge Koopman Lumber locations. Some of the first steps, if you're going to be using a skid steer machine like the one behind me, called Dig Safe. This is a free service, doesn't cost you anything, but you have to allow 72 hours for them to come out and inspect the site, that's 72 business hours. It's the first step to make sure that you're not going to hit any buried underground utilities. If you're digging and that happens, you're going to have a really bad day. In order to rent and use a machine like this, you must have a hoisting license or you have to obtain a temporary hoisting license. That can be obtained from a website called rentandmass.com. Some of the basic safety of the skid steer, first is common sense, it's not a toy. You want to make sure that whenever you're running the machine that you keep any bystanders, keep kids away. This would be called an attractive nuisance to children, so you are responsible for keeping them away and keeping the area safe. <clears throat> when you start the machine, some things are is start it slow, give yourself a little bit of practice time, get used to the controls, the foot controls, the hand controls. Don't be in a rush to start the job right away. Go to the Bobcat website, look at their training video, that'll be on the screen here. Read the safety manual. There's a safety manual in the back of the cab. Take a few minutes to familiarize with it. Any decals that are on the machine, any safety decals, make sure that you read them and obey what they say. They're there to keep you safe. Whenever you're entering the machine, you always want to maintain three-point contact. You've got four points of contact on your body, two hands, two feet. Keep three points in contact with the machine at all the time. Once you're seated inside the machine, you're getting ready to operate it. Step number one, always put the safety harness on. If you're running the machine and you hit something solid and that machine stops quick, this is your protection against breaking a rib because it can stop so quick you can be forced against this safety bar here that you can hurt yourself. So put that harness on. And some of you old timers will say, oh, I've done this years. That's great, but still wear that safety harness. Okay, now that you're in the machine, some of the control startup procedure, you got your key over here, you do one click. If it's a cold start, you'll see a countdown timer up here on the left. That is uh, the glow plug. The glow, glow plug heats up the cylinder so that the machine can start. Once the timer goes down to zero, you go ahead and turn the machine on. Once the machine is running, there's a traction override lock. Um, when you press this button, that allows the controls, the hand controls and the foot controls to operate the machine. Hand controls do the forward, backward turn motions. The foot controls do the bucket raise and tilt procedure. Inside the machine, behind me, there's a yellow tag right here. If you pull down that tag, you can pop out the rear window. That is a safety exit. Obviously, please never use that unless you're really in an emergency, if you've had some sort of a rollover situation where you can't get out the front door. But that is a secondary form of exit in the machine. Around me, there's a, a roll cage. You never want to interfere with any part of the roll cage. That's there for your protection. Don't never modify it, never try to remove anything. It's there for your safety protection. The overhead is in case you've got material that's falling on your head. When you're in the machine, Especially when you're starting out, you want to operate the controls smoothly and easily. Move them forward. When you move forward a little bit, you're going to move slower. As you go forward more, you'll move, your speed will pick up. If you're going to turn to the left, you do your opposite control technique here where you're moving the controls in opposite directions. Once the machine is started and running, you're getting familiar with the controls. Before you begin to move, you're going to look around the area to make sure the area is clean behind you on each side. Then you release the parking brake and then you're set to go. The machine can only be operated with the door closed. Realize that that door is open right now. The machine has a safety override that won't even allow me to raise and lower the bucket. But in case that safety ever got compromised, if I tried to raise the bucket, I could actually snap the door right off the hinges. So the door must be closed before you begin to operate the machine. This machine uses diesel fuel. To access the diesel fill, there's a release lever inside of here. Swing the door open, 
green cap, diesel fuel only, that's where your fuel goes. Okay, just some basic safety operating procedures. Now these procedures are not exhaustive. To get exhaustive documentation, you get the owner's manual, you've got the Bobcat website, you've got the uh, hoisting license information. My information is not exhaustive, but I'm going to hit you some with, with some of the highlights. First of all, you're starting out, keep it slow. Become familiar with the machine with slow operation. Don't overload the bucket. If you overload the bucket with too much material, too many heavy rocks, and then you try to back up really quick, you can actually cause the machine to tilt forward. Again, a good reason to wear your safety belt. When you're running the machine and you have a full load, keep that load as low as possible to the ground. That'll keep the machine much more stable. Whenever you have the bucket raised, never, never, never exit the machine with the bucket raised. It must always be in the lowered position. Don't allow anybody to come close to you with that bucket in the raised position. Go straight up and down slopes. Up the slope and down the slope. If your slope is like this, never go across a slope like this. That's when you have the potential for rollover or tipping. Always look in the direction of travel. You want, if you're backing up, make sure you're looking over your shoulder, looking at the side. Know what's behind you. Be aware of your situation. Keep your bystanders away. If anybody has little kids, that little kid is going to beg for a ride in the machine. The answer is no. Only one person belongs in the machine, and that's the driver. Watch out for overhead wires. It's something that sometimes is not noticed until you hit them. Look up, look up, see what's above. Look for that basketball hoop, look for those little branches, look for that telephone wire, the power wire. Be aware of your situation. Again, before you begin running, look for, look, before you begin running the machine, call DigSafe. It's 811, very easy, and it's a free service that's offered. If you're ever running the machine inside of a building, make sure the building is adequately ventilated. If you run the machine in a closed, confined area, it's dangerous, never, never do that. Whenever you rent a Bobcat skid steer, you have to get the machine to your job site. This is a trailer that we use to transport the Bobcat. If you have your own trailer, you're all set. If you need to use this trailer, this is available at a rental fee. Okay, this is where you'd hook up to the trailer to tow the Bobcat. You have to have a pintle hitch attachment on your vehicle. Your vehicle has to be rated for 10,000 pounds. You have to have the plug-in, which plugs in and activates the electric brakes on the trailer and operates the lights. If you're not sure if your vehicle is wired for brakes, you need to check with your mechanic or check with your dealer. That's not an option, it's a safety thing. If you have 10,000 pounds behind your vehicle and you do not have the electric brakes operating on the vehicle, when you hit your brake pedal, you're going to keep on going.